right? It's got silliness in it. You know. Um, but it's, it's a great film to look at and really talk about and think about, you know, how this all comes together, right? Because the director's clearly playing on this, you know, the genre of the horror film. I mean, this is the classic possessed object film. We think of, I always think of Cube whenever I see this. I'm like, oh yeah, that one, that one creeps me out, man. Dude, it's freaky. Um, but it, it's that, it's that classic thing. And also, you know, there are a number of other things going on. Like, Georgie's roommates have no clue what's going on, right? And so it's this kind of, he's crazy on his own. This is definitely man against the machine thing that's going on here. Um, at the same time, there are a number of things that also, just like with um, Our Time Is Up, that tell us more about Georgie than we get because there's not a whole lot of dialogue and interaction. We just, we know that, you know, he's... Not the best roommate, kind of a slacker, eating everybody else's food, right? Um, doesn't want to do anything, just wants to hang out and play games. Um, but we also learn a lot. I mean, that's really all we learn about him from dialogue. But we learn a lot more, too, from what we see. Um, and so, like, here are some of the things that really stand out for me in this film. And as we go through and look at these different aspects, think about how they're used in different ways. And in, in horror films, I think horror films are a great example because they really use, like, the things of their genre, even when they're parodies of horror films, because they're really using all of those things of the genre, and they're a lot easier to see. So that is one of the reasons I like this one. Um, so... Um, these are just kind of the things that go into general cinematography, which as we go along, we'll read, be reading more specifically about them. But specifically here, looking at like the scale, like how big is the object pictured? How far away is it? Are we close to it? Um, you know, how does that camera move? Does it do those like pans and tilts? You know, is it moving and looking around? Um, and then that framing, that's why in, you know, whenever they're kind of making fun of directors or something in films and you see the guy going around, like this, you know, they're, they're looking at, well, what if I did that and you were right in the middle or over at the side, or what's this going to look like when you're just looking at that big rectangle, right? How does it fit into things? Do you want something right in the middle? Do you want it at the side, um, one side or the other? All of those kinds of things. Um, so for me, in this, there are a number of things. Those are a number of things that stand out here. And so here, I mean, we start with that, besides that, that music, which is, on one hand, I mean, it does have that kind of, you get it that this is a scary movie, but it's definitely that scary movie with quotes, right? Just from the start, it's like, yeah, this is scary movie music, but there's going to be some kind of comedy. There's something just a little lighthearted about it. Um, but we also get, I mean, we start out with those images, you know, the dark alley and the light coming through. And that kind of light seeping through just small places is one of the real hallmarks of, you know, dark shots in... Um, horror movies are in suspense, things like that. Well, for one, if it's all dark, we can't see it, and it's just a black screen, right? But that kind of idea that there's just a little bit of light coming through, through enough to guide us, enough that we would feel safe. Oh, yeah, there's light, but not enough to really always see something. And then we get a lot of close-ups, and that's one of the things that all films would do, but in this one, you know, they really stand out. You know, it's not just like seeing that dog over there, it's seeing it right up close. Um, oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to scratch the dog. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, and again, I mean, this the guy who the, initially drops that refrigerator off, right? We don't see him at first. We just see his footsteps, just kind of, I mean, his leg, excuse me, taking these footsteps one at another. And when we do see him, we get this close-up. Now, how different is it for me to talk to you like this or for me to talk to you like this? That's way different. And, and he's like, Dude, don't do it to me, man, right? I mean, it is different. We have different senses of space and where that should be. And what this does is this puts us up close and personal to this person's face, just like that. It is, it is that space we don't share with a lot of people on a daily basis as we're going through life. And so those close-ups are about intimacy, whether it is an intimacy of feeling and romance or whatever, or friendship, or just let us really see this emotion that's going on here. So even in the context of something silly, what we get is this emotion, this, this dissatisfaction, this fear, all of those things. And two, we get the close-ups of the things. 
We don't really even know what this is yet, but we know it is something there, and we can realize, you know, metal mechanical. I love that transition where it goes from these raindrops dripping down to that just, you know, computer code dropping down on the screensaver. That's really nice. One, so. um, and then we get our first picture of Georgie, and we get our first picture of Georgie very up close and personal. So it's not just, I mean, we realize from the moment, we don't have to consciously realize to know this guy's important to the film because there is that proximity because we get that very, not just a little bit of a close-up, but a very extreme close-up in those ways. Um, and then we stay with him. And, of course, a couple of things are going on here to notice. Not only is this a close-up, so we still get him and we get this fridge, but, of course, he's crouched down and he's look over. And notice, in a way, this isn't necessarily filmed. I mean, we're kind of straight on with him, but we're a little bit above that. This is the look. Y'all are giving me the look of I have the authority because you are looking up at me. I have power. This is weird to look at a teacher, right? To look down like that. And you know, like Greek and Rome days when somebody philosophized and everything. Actually, the, the teacher, the philosopher would sit down and everybody else would have to stand. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, y'all should have to stand up and do the work. It is, right? So, I mean, those angles even. And this isn't, this isn't huge. I mean, we're, we're pretty close to straight on. But just think about those angles, how we look at things, right? If something, if we're looking straight up at something, then it has more dominance, more power in that way. When we were kids, we all looked up at our parents just because we were born shorties. That's the way it is. Um, so this gives us that sense of intimacy. And, of course, we know that he's, like, sneaking this stuff. And that's because of his actions. He's looking over his shoulder and everything. <coughs> and then this is a good example of the long shot where we see Georgie's still in the front here, and he's the main focus. But we get this kind of bigger picture of his world. And so it sets it in the context of that. But keeping him right in the front definitely keeps him, even though – we're going to see all these other things go on kind of in the background around him. It keeps him as our main focus. And I think the other thing it does too, and so what am I doing? I'm saying, look, he's here and they're there, and there's meaning here. That's what we're doing. I think the other thing it does too is is he often stays in much more focus than that. You can see Dia here. She's, you know, it's it's not as well focused. So it's, it's a metaphor for that focus. Um, but it also, I think, too, kind of reflects Georgie's idea, right? That there he is, he's in focus, and everybody else are just these things that happen around him. Because there's not a connection. There's not personal responsibility on Georgie's part. He's not feeling like he really has to worry about any of that. Right? Um, and again, here we go when he goes out. And, and you know, one of the, the scenes that's nice, too, is when everybody's laying out the money and the way it's filmed, and he's got his foot up on the table, is barefooted, and you see his toes. And, you know, I mean, it's just like such a, you know, that kind of image there of just kind of seeing all that. We don't see people's toes in movies a lot, do we? You get something unusual that you say, huh, why'd they show me their toes? What's up with that, right? I mean, it's just like such this kind of casual kind of attitude about this thing that is important to the household he lives in. As a roommate, you have to take care of the fridge, and the fridge breaks down. Is it just your problem if you're all for sharing a space? Hopefully not, right? Do you want roommates like that? At this point, we're kind of like, dude, we don't want roommates. Georgie to be the roommate. Um, but again, here we go. Here's another close-up. And so here we move into places where the horror movie can also move, which is not just always the dark corner. It's not always about darkness. It often is. But a lot of times things are in very bright light. And one of the things you'll notice is they're often real high contrasts, like really bright lights and, and kind of very fewer colors around, too. So this one, what we get is we get the blue sky, but then we're going to get a lot of white. It's just this kind of two-color thing going on. Are you really going to pick the fridge up out of the alley with the like claws on it and the glowing red orb? I mean, was this not a sign? And, and of course, symbolism plays a lot um, into things, too, and we can talk about that because this is mise-en-scene, right? This is decor, choosing this fridge. And, of course, I really don't think they went and bought this off the shelf. I think they had to add that to it. 
ornament. This is the hood ornament. I've never had a fridge with a hood ornament. Man, I need one. Yeah. <laughs> but so, but this is me since scene two. And really, other than that just little bit of white and the little bit we get in the intro of this fridge, this is our first introduction to it. Right? This is the thing we see. And so the director doesn't show us the whole thing, doesn't show us the door, the sides, anything like that, the shadow of it. No, what we get is that glowing orb in the claw, right? So obviously, I mean, it's just a very obvious kind of this is ominous. And that's ominous because we've seen shit like that before, right? And one of the things in films and books and life and all of that is the expectation that the reader is smart, that the reader has cultural context, that we can see this. I could have shown you this without showing you the film, and wouldn't you have said, something weird's going on there, something spooky, something, something's wrong with whatever that's attached to, right? Because of that kind of sense of that in a way. Um, and then, of course, what we get next is, Georgie putting his hand on it, but it's not just from far away. It's very close. So again, very in, in, um, intimate, him making that physical connection with it. And then we'll see so many scenes like this in so many in, in Westerns, right? The shootout in, you know, the, the good guy versus the bad guy um, or person, good person versus bad person, where it is that face-off in a way. Um, and so that's what we get here. But notice how it's just, there's the bright, bright white, and then there's these kind of things in shadow. So that, that brightness creates that contrast as well. Um, and then um, this scene. Uh, what kind of music was playing in this scene? You remember this? Let me pull it up real quick. Let's watch that scene. I forget. Hold on. I was going to say I forget where that's at, but oh, I didn't get the timestamp in there. Bummer. Bummer. All right here. <laughs> this one too, right? So like so many things in silhouette and um, just being able to kind of see Georgie in this space. There he is all alone um, in that way. So, okay, here we go. I mean, isn't that sweet music? Oh, man, that's like a lullaby. You could play that for a baby. That's innocent, that's soft. What are we learning about Georgie here? What's, he's what? He hasn't grown up, right? He is still that kid inside. And so this moment here up to this point, you know, we see what Georgie does. We see how he behaves. We see all these kinds of things. But this moment is not anywhere where we get anything really much more than his stuff. This is all me sensing and that music. We get that music, right? And so that music gives us that emotional tone, something sweet, something soft, something light. And then we see that he's just really still a little kid. And so one of the things it does, whether, you know, it truly changes it, but it does give us a little moment of empathy. And it's all through, it's not through Georgie's actions, it's not through anything he does, but this moment of seeing him in the context of his things. Um, and the, that sound, that overlay of the music there, gives us this moment of empathy and, and insight into another part of Georgie. Right? That's not just that one that's seen by his roommates or that we're seeing with him on his own. This is another side of Georgie. We don't have to like him. We don't want to have to want him to, want him to be our roommates, but this is part of who he is as well. And so here you can see how just like in our time is up where we got you know those shirts, those shoes, that coffee, all of those things told us so much about Dr. Stern. Here's another place in less than 30 seconds when we're learning something that we don't even see in this character up to this point in the movie. So in that case, it's that sound and, of course, that mise en scene, that decor that's doing that. Um, and then, of course, I laugh every time his head gets bashed by the refrigerator, and I just wonder if I'm a horrible person for that. But it's pretty freaking funny. I don't know, right? <laughs> like, not everybody in the class always laughs, and I'm like, oh, I must suck. I must be horrible. 
<laughs> um, so, I mean, definitely, oh, that was earlier, but definitely this moment where, you know, where he finds that spoon outside and he sets it down on the cabinet. This is the moment of the challenge. This is the throwing down of the gauntlet. You know, take off that glove and throw it down. I challenge you to a duel. This is that moment of, and what we get is we get, you know, Georgie in this moment of having, we realize that he's just this child at heart, but he actually steps up. And one of the real key things of kind of any hero's journey, and, and slasher films are classically, and horror films are classically the hero's journey. Because what has to happen is you have somebody who, you know, realizes or finds themselves in a dire situation, and they have to make, part of it is, there's usually a mentor and things like that, and this doesn't really bring that in. But part of that whole classic story, whether it's horror, whether it's, you know, just the typical hero's journey, whatever, is that person has to make that decision, am I going to do this thing? Lord of the Rings, am I going to go leave the Shire and go to Mordor and throw this ring in the fiery pits, right? It's got to be that decision. And sometimes people don't, and then we don't hear the hero's story. So back out. Right? But at some point, they have to make that decision to fight that fight. And this is a real key moment when he drops this, right? where he's making that decision to stand up and be the hero. And then what we get when we look at this, so far we've seen kind of Georgie close up, intimate, who is he? But we also have seen a number of things where he is just kind of face to face with this refrigerator. You know, he's looking at the problem and he hasn't, you know, he's just still this problem, this problem, this thing that's happening, this recognition. But from here on out, we see a whole lot of him face to face, but we see a change in the lighting. Watch this. So here's the face to face, right? He sets it down and he, he basically says, I'm going to get you, motherfucker. That's how I read that look, okay? Um, and then we get this one. I mean, that is the classic, you know, okay, the light has come on and he is silhouetted with the light behind him and the weapon in his hand ready to fight. Um, and so we get this really classic scene that is that idea of the hero, the one who's going to fight, the one who's going to take this evil, whatever kind it is, down. And that's all created through that light and dark. It's created through those moments. And of course, this was the da-da-da. I mean, there's like almost that like kind of sound in this moment. And so, of course, it's also created by that, that um, use of music, too, that gives us that feeling of what's going on in his spirit. Um, and then, of course, we've got to have the fight scene. And fight scenes are this mix of, you know, seeing what's happening, but also really quick transitions between that and very close close-ups. And I love the lemon rolling down because, like, a lemon's such a... It's a lemon. It's a piece of fruit, right? And it becomes this dangerous thing. I don't know. Um, and then, of course, always the reaching for the weapon, that kind of thing. So that's always about a lot of this. The intimacy here is not feeling sorry for him, is not questioning, is not a kind of romance or friendship or anything. But that intimacy here is that sense of adrenaline, that sense of, you know, got to get something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't have it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was something definitely in kind of the writing of it. And that's where we look at the writing of it because that's how it's scripted. Um, is this idea that shows us that, that Georgie does know how to figure things out. Right? And that's, that's definitely insight into that. So, definitely. And, of course, we go back and forth, you know, Georgie's hand. I mean, this is like looking in the eye, into the eye of Satan refrigerator. Satan narrate, Satan narrator. I'm not sure how that works. Um, and then at the moment, I always want to scream, "Double tap, Georgie! Double tap!" Because you know, when you kill the bad guy, it's always going to come back, right? Especially the haunted bad guy. Okay, but he doesn't. Mm. Um, but again, we get, you know, I mean, here's this light and this moment of victory, this moment of complete exhaustion of having given himself to have saved this. And so, again, we've got that light. And in a way, this is kind of almost a, a little bit of a halo of light, that kind of sense of that in a way. And Georgie exhausted in the front there. Um, and then, you know, the other thing we get, and we got this earlier, too, is we got this this you know, big, um, it's a it's a further away scene. It's not quite that close up. It's more of a long shot, about a medium. But also notice we're lower than it, right? We're looking up at that fridge. So again, that fridge is still powerful. Yeah. Uh, like, whenever you find the fridge, like, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's all smoking and it's not happening anymore. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that admission that Georgie has won. He is the winner, right? It told it totally tapped out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 skillet, yeah, the pan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, because well, when we saw that old man drop it off at first, right, the older man, right? So we understand this is a cycle. And this is really, and this is where we start talking about the writing. And this is where we have to be careful because this is fun and this is good to talk about. But when we're writing this paper, we are really focusing on this mission scene, the shots, the lighting, the color, the decor, all of those things we're going to study in terms of the vocabulary. But I also, what we're also doing is prepping for looking at the stories where we do look at the writing. And so one of the things that does happen in the, you know, one of the common endings of the horror story is not the bad guy gets killed and is gone forever. It is that hint that he's still out there. And then, of course, is one of the things that makes scary stories scary. If there's a scary story about somebody who does horrible things and it scares you and they're dead, that's cool. You can take comfort in that, right? If they're still able to be out there, well, maybe that's a story, but maybe it's true. I'm thinking back to being a kid and like, but maybe it's true. My gosh, right? That sense of ongoing. And so this is really typical for just the form and structure of, you know, one way of writing a horror story. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, and the chicken's still out there. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, we end this, end this with this, um, or, you know, that's part of the ending here. And, and you can think back, and there is, if you go back and rewatch this, you'll see there's also scenes earlier where we're seeing this fridge where it's always above us. We're looking up at it. And so it becomes that thing with more power there. Um, and then we get, you know, Georgie, just in the same way we saw that old man, the older man at the first, you know, limping away through the rain and the darkness down this alleyway. We get Georgie doing the same thing, and of course that signal that this isn't really over. It may be over. The battle may be won for Georgie, but there's someone else out there who's going to have to fight that same battle. Um, and then, of course, yeah, the magnets, right? I work, yeah. That enticing thing, entice it in. Um, so a number of those things and even more are going on here. And that's one of the ways we look at it. Now, when we watch it, we just watch it. First time you watch it, you just watch it. Just enjoy it. Take it in, right, for whatever it is, for scariness, for silliness. Because if you don't experience those emotions that come with it, how can you ask yourself, well, what caused me to feel that way? You've got to have that feeling that goes with it. And then you say, wait, what, what was it? And it may be sometimes it is. Of course, I mean, the writing and the scripting makes a difference. Um, but at the same time, it's more than that. If we had just read the script for this and it says, you know, um, close-up view of Georgie's face, we would have imagined that, right? But it, would it be at all the same as seeing the whole thing? No. If I'd have sent you home with the script and said, okay, we're going to study film by just reading the script, you'd have said, you're missing something, Kelly. You're missing something. Right? Um, so first you have to take it in. And the same is true with reading stories. First, you just have to read them and let them be. Let them settle on you and be what they are. And then to analyze, we step back and we look at it again and say, okay, what went into this? What is happening? And that's where we have to know that terminology because that gives us something to say, well, what is happening with the distance in these shots, with the scale that we've got going on here? What is happening with the movement of this camera? What is happening with this lighting or this mise-en-scene or this sound thing? Cool beans? 